Hello, this is your 8.82 .8 tutorial. I'm going to start off with a new drawing. Make sure you load your proper template file. My template files are stored in my documents under McFadder templates. We're going to be using the McFadder ACAD template today. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to turn off the grid. I'm also going to do a step you do not have to do. I'm going to attach an image of the assignment we're working on today. This way we can see it in our work spot space. This being a multi-view. We're going to get the majority of the information off of the top view. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to go back to the home tab on layer zero. Draw some lines. Starting with the line command, so like any random spot using the ortho tool. The length from the back to the front is two. So I'm going to type in two. Then I'm going to go to my right. The distance is 2.5. We go back up to again. And I'm just going to close it by going to the endpoint of the line. Right click, enter. I have the outline of the piece from the top view. The very top piece of this has a one inch offset and a half inch offset. I'm gonna go ahead and use the offset command at 0.5, enter. I'm gonna select the back line, bringing it down, making half inch. Then I'm going to continue that half inch and select that and offset another half inch. The two half inch equals one inch. Enter. Now I need to come from the left hand side, 0.45. Going to use the offset command again. Point forty five. And I come from that side and come in. The next measurement is point eighty. So I'm going to hit the escape key. Offset. Point eight. Enter. Selecting that line and doing it once and then twice. I click enter. These three lines, I'm going to convert them into center lines. Help me remember that's center. And also the first 0.5, I'm also going to convert that into a center line. Now I can see that this is my centers for my circles. We're going to be doing a counter sink. This is two different size circles, a top value and a bottom value. The first circle I'm going to draw, I'm going to use the diameter command going to the intersection. And I need a diameter of 0.25. Then I'm going to need another circle. And here I'm going to do as 0.5. And these two circles are concentric, so they share the same center point. And I'm going to take those two, selecting those two items, using the copy command, 
and going from each intersection. And now I have those in place. I have another radius located here, a point 75. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my circle tool to radius. This is located 1.25, which is half of 2.5. So I'm gonna use the midpoint, draw the circle on. The radius is 0.75. And there's my circle. I'm gonna use the trim command. Selecting the circle and this line, cutting away at the line, and then cutting away at the circle. Oh, I finished the command a little promptly, so I'm going to reselect these lines. Click and trim. Enter. So this is my top view. I can go ahead and remove these center lines that I have here. I'm going to change my layer to center. And I'm going to use the annotate tool, the center mark, to select each circle. To put a center mark on there, and also the big one. Now this is going to be important. I do not want the center line to intersect with the edges of the circle to cover a line. So for this one, I'm going to select it and go to Properties. And where it says Show Extension, I'm going to say No. Now it's just a center mark. I'll close out the Properties. And besides the mentioning, that's this top view is done. And since this is a multi-view, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to select this and copy it, bringing it across to any random distance out here. And then I'm going to select this. I'm going to rotate. Use the rotate tool, picking the end point there and pulling it straight down. So now it's pointing at its side toward my right side view. This is going to be a little bit far, so I'm going to select it and move it back. A little bit more towards this direction. Now I can start projecting my line work from the source. Let me escape that. Let me go ahead and make sure I'm using layer zero, or I could be using my construction line types. Construction is also a good la layer to work with when you're starting off your drawing. For the video purpose, it might be a little bit dark, so I'm going to change that back to layer zero so you can see it easily. Just like that. To layer zero. I'm also going to go through and select the rest of these objects here. Since so I have those objects selected, I'm going to change them to the actual object layer. This one. So I'm going to select this guy here. Change the layer zero, or object layer. That's a little bit easier to read. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that line that I just casted down. I'm going to use the copy command. Using the base point here as my starting point. I'm going to go through the drawing and go across all the different edges that make up this piece right here from the front. I can then draw a line from here. Going straight across. 
Let's make sure this is still on layer zero. Let's make sure my working layer is also on layer zero. Now, this I'm not going to really need to the final product. This is gonna help me in construction of making my site. So I'm not too worried about making sure the layers are proper for this job. The height of this piece from the bottom upward is a total of 0.75 with a 0.25 uplift here. So I'm going to select this and use the copy command. Selecting a base point somewhere out here and going up. First dimension is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, enter. Then the next dimension is going to be 0.75, enter. You'll notice that I have my ortho tool on. If you do these type of techniques, you want to make sure that your ortho tool is on. It's located down here. I hit escape. All right, so we now have this base piece coming together already. I can actually start trimming out some of this information from the top to the bottom. I can cut these guys out. And then I can use this end here to cut these away. Now, this line here and this line here have two different heights. We can see the 0.25 here, and above that we can see the 75. So I'm gonna use this line and this line here as my cutting plane to cut out where that circle is going to be. I'm gonna to need to still put more information in here, but I'm gonna need information from the side view to complete that. But for now, I can use those two as a cutting plane to cut away right here and I can repeat the trim using this line and this line to cut above so that this is ready to receive the ellipse for this view. All right, let's go ahead and get this drawn here. Start drawing some line work coming from here down. I'll select that line and copy. Down here, I see my top piece right here. I'm gonna draw a line from this intersection down to here. This is gonna create that slope on the face. And this is pretty much here finished. I'm going to use the trim command. Selecting this line as a cutting plane to cut away at this. Repeating my trim command using this line to cut this line and this line here. I'm no longer required to have this line at all, so we hit delete. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim using the bottom and these two sides as cutting planes and this top line here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go through and remove all these excess lines. Ah, so where it's this, I did not use this as a cutting plane, so it cut this away too. I can just draw that in, replace it, going from endpoint to endpoint and drawing an endpoint to end point here. All right, so now I have the majority of this ready to go. So what I need to do is project my information for the holes that are being cut into this material. I'm gonna change my line type to hidden, and I'm gonna project a hidden line from this midpoint straight down through this piece. This is the edge of the circle that's cut in through the top. This will represent that hole through here. 
So now what I'm gonna do is trim, selecting this and this here to cut away at that hidden line. I'm gonna change my layer back to layer zero. And I'm gonna take that line, the top end point that I have here, I'm gonna project it across this piece. Be careful not to snap on anything. And then I'm gonna bring my center line. So I'll change my layer to center. From here, straight down. And this is what's going to make the ellipse that I need to connect from this point to the highest point of the circle down to the bottom here of that edge, okay? This is a foreshortened view. You'll learn more about these in auxiliary views. But here in multi-views, all you have to do is worry about how to create them for now. We're gonna use a axis N ellipse. This is gonna go from this endpoint to this endpoint. And then we're gonna go to that top intersection right here and create the circle. This could have been created with layer zero. Then what I'm gonna do is use the trim command, selecting this edge and this edge here. I could also select this edge and that edge, doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna use these two because all it's required. Right click and cut this away here. And now we can see that circle as if we were looking at it and seeing how it affects the cut as it's going on that upward surface. Okay. And now I can go ahead and delete this. I no longer need it. I'll leave the center line here for now. Now the next thing is going to be these countersinks. Okay. It's a type of drill that's used to sink like a screw head into a piece. These screw heads are typically sloped for a, a countersink and they'd be flat for a counter bore. For now, let's go ahead and change our layer to a hidden line and we're going to project from the quadrant straight down, right through the whole piece. And once I have that one line, I'm gonna select it, use the copy command, and place it on every quadrant from left to right. Not worry about the top and bottom, that's gonna be covered by a center line. So I'll change the center line. And just for reference, I'll bring the center line straight down. So we can see what we're working with. So imagine this piece being drilled. You have a small drill that's gonna go from the top all the way through the bottom. But then there's gonna be another drill that's gonna come through and bore out at an angle, or sink into on that angle. There's a depth for that. So the first drill is the 0.25, which will go all the way through. And then the drill, the countersink, that's 0.5, will have an angle at 82 degrees. If we take that 82 degrees and cut it in half, we end up with 41 degrees on one side, 41 degrees on the other side. So what I need to do is take a line here, going straight up, and I need the angle from here to go down this way or go down this way 
at 41 degrees. I'm going to select this line. I'm going to use the rotate command. Select the bottom of the line. And I'm going to rotate it negative 41. Enter. Then I'm going to select that line. And I'm going to mirror it right from the end point, straight up. And I'm going to hit enter. And if my mass is correct, from here to here, this is my angle of my drill tip. So imagine this drill coming through here to cut open that piece. I'm going to change this to a hidden line. Then I'm going to select this line here. I'm going to use the move command. I'm going to grab it at the very tip of this and place it at the top of the piece right here in the midpoint. And then I'm going to grab those two little legs here and here. I'm going to use the move command, but I'm going to move it from the intersection of the larger circle. OK, so once I click intersection, now I can pull it straight down to the intersection where the line hits the object here. And that's how deep that drill should go in to match that diameter. Now I'm going to use the trim command using the white top piece to cut away this angle and the angle there. Right click, enter. I'll delete this dimension because it's in my way for right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and use trim, selecting the angle that's cutting away at this hidden line and that hidden line here. And since this drill is going into the other hole, what ends up happening is when it gets down to this level right here, the drill can't make an impression on the piece. So we're going to go ahead and trim this to cut away that imaginary drill. And what we're left with is what the cut would look like drilling into the material and stopping at the correct depth. Let me go ahead and change this line type to hidden. And then I could trim away. Actually, I don't need this at all. So I'll select this and select this and hit the delete key. The top is still at the correct distance. We have our angle present and we have the counter sink, the, the drill that's here. So now use the trim command, select this and cut away at this leg and this leg of that. And there it is. This is the counter sink. Now, I could do the whole process again, all over again, right here. But since all three of these, one, two, three, are all in line with each other, I only need one of these on this view. But here, I need three of them. What I'm going to do is project some more center lines. So I'm going to use the copy command on that center line I have here. And I'm going to bring one over to here. And I'm going to bring one over to here. And I just need these for reference points. These are the three holes that are going to be drilled here, here, and here. In order to do that, I'm going to highlight with the blue highlight going from my left down to my right. And then it selects everything that's inside of that highlightable area. I'm going to use the copy command. I'm going to use the top intersection right here and I'm going to move it to here to here and to here right click enter and now these counter bores are all our counter sinks are all in place I no longer need these lines and I no longer need this line here hit delete
I'm going to go to annotate, center line, select here to here. Uh, that one didn't come out so well. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go ahead and draw our center line in. What I want is a nice clean center line in the middle of this. It goes from the very top here to the bottom here. I'm going to go to my Home tab, and I'm going to draw an anno line, just so we can see it, from the midpoint here, straight down, perpendicular. What that's going to do is give me a midpoint right here. Now I can go ahead and change my layer to center, start a line command from approximately somewhere around here. And I'm gonna pull it down until I get this nice clean pop. You see how it, it opens up and becomes a center line? It's larger than end to end of the piece. And I just need it right there till it gives me that nice clean pop. There's no exact measurement to this, so you don't have to worry about that. Just make sure it's nice and clean. Right click, enter. And I'm gonna take that line, I'm gonna move it from the midpoint to the midpoint of this line right here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna show green on top of the anno layer that I used to find the midpoint. I can then select that red line in between the green and delete that. And now I have a nice clean center line for this countersink. I'm going to select that line. I'm going to use the copy command using the midpoint there. And I'm just going to go across. Mm, Prampably got rid of my centers. Those would have been helpful. But because this is a circle, I can find another method selecting that and copying. I'm going to use the edge of the cylinder. And I'm going to bring it across and place it on each one. And here we go. Center lines are nicely marked. I projected everything down from here that I needed. So I no longer need this view. I can now delete this. I'm going to change all my layer zero lines to object layer. I select all these in here. This might be a little bit more difficult. Make sure you zoom in when you're selecting your objects. Okay, looking good. Change that to layer object. All right, and our multi-view looks like it's complete. I'm gonna select this and move it down just a little bit making sure ortho is on. Let's take a look and see what size sheet we want to put this on. Looks like we can fit here. A little tight. Uh, we're at one to one scale already. Let's go ahead and look at our 11 by 17. That looks like it's gonna give us a little bit too much space. So let's go with our eight and a half by 11. And I'm gonna try and just tuck these in just a little bit more. So I click inside the viewport, selecting my object, moving it down. Just a scooch. And then I could pan it, centering it a little better. Let's bring this one a little bit more to the left. Recent input, move. Selecting and bringing it across. Making sure to keep that ortho on. Ortho is very important. And don't snap to anything. If you bring it here and you bring it across, you might snap onto this thing and it will move it up or down. You need these to be in line 
for a multi-view to be true. All right, center that a little bit nicer. We're at one-to-one -one scale. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my viewport so it doesn't move when I'm dimensioning this. I'm gonna change my layer to Anno. And I can start putting in some of my dimensions. Linear. I know I'm gonna need the height here. And we need an overall height here. I'm gonna need an overall from here to here. I'm gonna push that up a little bit high because I know I need to get the dimensions from here to here. Now, because this is pulling on the inside, I'm gonna take that one out. Uh, I'm gonna hit the delete key. All right, on your dimension, I come from the hole this time to the edge and pull it up. That way it places to the left. You know, the linear dimension from here to here. And I want to line it up with that arrow so it stays nice and neat. Right click, repeat linear dimension here to here. And line up with that arrow there. Looking good so far. Let's keep repeat linear dimension. Place your linear dimension off of the circle. I'm going to need a radius dimension. So let's change our annotation to radius, selecting that circle. Place that dimension on the inside. Let's go ahead and go to the model space. We'll take a look at how they notated this. We also need these dimensions here, or I don't think we put those in yet. We could do that here as well. Linear. From here to the center. Placing that dimension at 0.5. Right click, repeat linear dimension. And let's do our overall here. Let's see how that looks real quick on our sheet. A little close. You go ahead and pan that over just a little bit. Let's click on set the viewport. No. Do we need to unlock it? Unlock it. To pan a little bit more over. There we go. It fits in the center nicely. All right. We'll lock it back. Back to the model space, see what else I missed. Anything else? This is good, this is good. Now I'm gonna point this countersink symbol in here. You know, one thing we haven't done, very important, make sure we save, 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 save. I'm gonna go here and save our drawing. Our drawing is the Chapter eight. So this is gonna be the eight point eight two. And save that. All right, so now after looking at this drawing, I've noticed that we have extra decimal places that's required in the drawing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and change my dim. D-I-M style. Click on the dim style. I'm going to modify. Primary units. I'm going to change the precision to two places. And then hit OK. Close. And then everything updates. That looks good. As you saw, I just adjusted those a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. One thing that um, is important is that when you're moving these, to avoid that snap point that's right here, if you end up clicking somewhere on the text, you'll see that it'll end up snapping right back to where it was. It won't really affect it too much. So you just gotta kind of move away from the text kind of positions that a little bit nicer. We could also check our alignment with all the different arrows, making sure that the dots, the blue dots are in line with each other, keeping everything nice and neat. So that's all taken care of. Uh, let's see here, what else do we have to do? We're gonna need to annotate these Counter sinks. Those in, those are in, those are in. Okay, so all we have left is the countersink and the overall. We need one overall linear from here to here. We have the overall here already. Could also take that and put it on this side here. Doesn't matter. Whichever looks best. Now we can go ahead and annotate those countersink symbols. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a diameter dimension, selecting the smallest circle. That's the first one on the list. I don't want a center mark, so I'm going to select that, go to Properties. And I'm going to change my center to None. Now it automatically puts in the diameter symbol because I use the diameter dimension. But I need to say three times. So I'm going to click on here. And the cross here starts at the front, so I'm going to go three, capital X, space, for three times. Then I'm going to arrow over to the back end. I'm going to hit the Enter key so I get to the next line. And while I'm in this next line right here, I need to add the countersink symbol. In order to add the countersink symbol, in the text editor, you'll see a symbol. We're going to go ahead and use other. And we're going to change this to GDT. So scroll down. GDT. And here we can see all the different symbols that we'll be needing. And this one contains our countersink.
and also contains a counter boar and a death symbol. For this one, we're going to use this one right here. I'm going to select it. Once I select it, it gets added to the characters to copy. Then I can go ahead and click copy. Once I'm here, right click in this in theory here and paste. It adds the symbol. Back to the side of it. I hit the space. So I need to say diameter. Go back to symbols. And I have my diameter. I could type in percent percent C, or I can just use this icon here. Once I have my diameter in place, type in 0 0.50. And then I'm going to space X for by. And that's going to be 82. Degrees. So I'm going to go back to my symbols again and add degrees. I could type in percent percent D, but this is just more than enough. And we'll notice here that this looks a little different than what's highlighted here. It's like a different scale. If we look here, annotation size is 0 0.09, but the text for this is 0 0.12. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this area here, selecting that whole line and change that to what it should be. Point one two. All right, so now we're all set. They're now both at the size they should be at. So now I'm going to click away from that. And then that text is now placed in there. The alignment for this could be a little better. So let me just select that again, adding the text. Highlight this whole thing. Shush this out a little bit. And I'm going to orient it. Just occasion. Middle left. And select away from that. Now it's nice in line. Actually, it might look a little better. I like that again. And change our justification again to top left. Nope, didn't have a full line. Okay, that's fine. So we got that done. Let's escape out of this. Um, our next step is to take a look at our sheet, see how that looks. Everything clear and concise. We have all our information there. And let's make sure we save our drawing. Once we have it saved, we'll go ahead and print it out. Go to print, 
it'll ask you about doing batch plotting. We only need one. So we'll go ahead and continue a single sheet. If you use the correct template, you'll already be to drawing the PDF. It'll be in monochrome. I can preview this. Look at our nice and clean drawing. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and hit the X and then hit the OK button. Once you hit the OK button, you'll be prompted to save the PDF with a file name. Save it where you're going to take all your work to turn in. Save it and then turn it in the way Mr. Regis requires. This has been your 8.82 tutorial and I'll see you in the classroom. Have a nice one.